Okay, just playing a 90-10 and the opponent's offered a draw already so it doesn't look like this game is going to last too long. And as we speak. Okay, I'm going to go for another one. Have we got a bite or have they made a mistake? Doesn't look like they're taking... Oh, and they're off. Okay. So it's a 90 minute, 10 second game. It's a practice for the up and coming tournaments. And just going to bring the night out. Educational for myself. Key thing is to just practice the stuff that we know. There's no point doing anything new apart from adding in that extra bit. About taking when it's absolutely necessary type thing. Just do that appropriately. So just bring the queen back. That's pretty straightforward for me. That's what we usually do. Oh, and we, we do like this fancy business coming here because we like to push the pawn up. Nine times out of ten, they probably push here. Then we potentially push here, that type of situation. It's very rare they do take because it is a free pawn at the end of the day. And all it is is we're just going to take the queen. So in essence, you'd think that they're in a better position. But no, they've pushed past, as we said. So as we said, we're going to push this pawn onto this pawn because that's what we're used to doing. I got that from the evaluation of my games. Um, I kept on, the, the computer kept on showing that move and I'm like going, there's no way made I'm making that move. But it did actually make sense to me because it dishevels them. They lose tempo um, and their position isn't as good as what you would think it is because they have to shuffle, they've got space around their king and it's more proactive for black so that's why I quite like using that particular manoeuvre so again we've given another pawn for them but again it's kind of rare to see them actually take the pawn here because they're, they're thinking about the queen but they've got the king and they've got the knight that can actually protect uh, yes, we get the 20 pointer if the king takes because then they can't go and castle, but they can castle by hand if they're being creative. If they take with the knight, obviously then we take the pawn here. But they could still make something of it. But they've got plenty of time to think about it. It's a long play game. I need to get into the long play psychology. And I definitely don't want my creative brain overthinking, thinking for uh, so supporting the pawn. Dear, wow! Well, you see, they're supporting in a way they're trying to win the tempo back, but really a bishop supporting a pawn. Is it looking at maybe attacking this pawn here towards the king? I'm not too sure at this moment in time because really and truly. It's not really the best place for the bishop. I suppose it can go back. A smaller piece attacking a higher piece goes back. Then I suppose we, we can attack the knight. So we're causing them a little bit of trouble just because they don't want to release this pawn in the center. We want to work around the center as we've always said. So there's key maneuvers. Um, we can bring the bishop here and put a check on the, on the knight. There's things to be done. Attacking the smaller piece attacking the higher piece seems more appropriate but then we're not going to get castled we, we like to castle don't we so I'm going to bring the bishop out and just x-ray through to the king so then at least we potentially have castling rights got to stick with what we're trying to practice rather than yes smaller piece attacking the higher piece is fine and good but we're always saying you have to sort your bed out first before you can actually go and start attacking so this is us potentially trying to sort our bed out by giving our king space to go and castle. At the same point, we're actually attacking a piece. 
Okay, so they brought their knight out defending their knight. So it looks like we've got them on the back foot. There is an x-ray through to the king as we mentioned. So this pawn here now is not really protected. So we could actually take this. His knight cannot take back. I would assume his queen would come and attack our knight. But then we would be able to take the knight as well. So that looks pretty straightforward to me. It looks like the opponent may have over over egged this type of situation potentially just because they're wanting to get castled and they don't want their king losing out. I believe we can take here. So we've got space to sort our bed out with the king going castling but this seems like an opportunity to really it's a positive capture. So he's castled anyway. So he's castled anyway. So he's down a pawn. But he's more wanting to sort his bed out first. Which I can commend them for that. Now we could take the knight. We could come around and attack the bishop. Could take the pawn. Maybe not. Knight needs to do something. I'm going to take the knight just to simplify because I'll probably rule the day that I didn't take the knight so I'm going to take it based on my experience if I've got a piece that I can capture it doesn't look too bad we're not going to be in a bad position I don't think we we'll probably need to get castled at some stage maybe after maybe taking the knight not too sure Because we don't have to do anything because there's no threats on us. So sorting our bed out would be appropriate, I think. So that feels okay. Now he's going to obviously champion the pawn. Because he's got his rook now supporting his queen. So I think he will be capturing. Also he can move his knight because there's nothing behind. Maybe he's going to bring his bishop here. That might lose them tempo. I think he's got to contend with this pawn. Or is he wanting to try and get this... Ah, there we go. <laughs> exact manoeuvre. Okay, so let's bring the knight into life. Maybe bishop, bishop, bishop. Or is he just going to capture the queen? So it's all been simplified we're just now looking to try and improve our position which is developing pieces where necessary he's not gone for the queen exchange he's gone for the smaller piece attacking the higher piece so I can almost commend it does split his pawns up though I suppose it's not a big issue in a sense could take his queen take take let's split the pawns up because if it's coming towards the end game then it's probably nicer for us them having split pawns because they can't work them together that's my rationale <laughs> Now it's got dancing rights here. Not too sure if I'm going to be doing that one now because we're getting towards the end. So sitting there, sitting there. But it all depends on what they do. They could actually just take the queen. But it doesn't look like they're going to be taking the queen because they had the opportunity to take the queen when they did the pawn move. So it looks like the queen is probably going to come offline or maybe even to here to look for the cheapy, which is the bishop coming to here. So that's probably where they're going to go with the queen here. It's my go, isn't it? <laughs> so, looking at the pot and messing about. It's my go. It's a good job we've got plenty of time. So do we go for the exchange of the queens or do we not bother? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me. Okay. 
so we could take the queen off the board there's no real big issue uh, it it might give us I don't think there's any major advantage per se um, we could look to do the cheapy ourselves couldn't we you know how we mentioned them coming here with their cheapy looking to come here there we could do a reversal of that thought process and bring our queen here to look to come here to get a cheapy here does that make sense it does make sense doesn't it Oh, just take the queen off the board when you get the opportunity to exchange queens exchange queens if it's to your benefit uh, we take his rook takes his rooks own in the file rook comes across looking to challenge maybe his rook takes then our knight comes then our knight is going to be on the back isn't it knight's going to be on the back bishop then comes out maybe to attack pawn pushes up maybe it don't come that far bishop comes here looking for his rook to attack so we can bring the knight back up again okay that seems feasible seems more straightforward I mean I'm doing the reversal but no I'll probably rule the day I didn't take the queen off the board just like the knight so we will take and obviously we are going to be moving this bishop I don't think it's this one because it's doubling the pawns here there's no need to do that I think we are bringing it out to here could still attack the rook hmm. so I don't have a problem with the picture that we done we're going to bring the bishop out which links up the rooks does it slow us down rook here no not rook there bishop up moves this bishop to do something bring the rook across attacking the rook rook doesn't have to take I'm actually going to go with what we originally said keep it simple so bring the knight down then that bishop's gonna have to move isn't it to get the rook involved so it's probably coming here and we need to just move the knight back again but then the bishop's gonna probably want to pressure it and we're gonna need to get this bishop out at some point so it's all been very simplified at the moment I don't feel I'm in a disadvantage I mean we're plus one and we've split their pawns and the only issue we have is our rook is stuck in the corner but I think we've got a few moves to be able to deal with that unless of course they've got some magical bishop moves that I'm not aware of at the minute that's not going to be any good for them the only place is it's not going to bring it there that's just blocking itself in so I think the only square is going to be here isn't it yeah exactly so now the bishop's all on its own and I think it might be it might be a good time to actually attack it if you look at the picture because if the bishop takes then the knight actually comes off the back rather than bringing the knight up here let's see if we can attack it it probably won't exchange because he's a pawn down so he's probably going to move it back here or to here not there to there sorry because it doesn't want to block his rook wants the rook to come here I'll be shocked if they take they're down a pawn so they're going to want to keep the two bishops yeah so that changed the picture a little bit it's quite nice I mean it might even come here actually but then if they come there we can just push here and push it push it away then it has to go back and then oh it's gone in the, gone in the middle I'm quite I'm shocked that it's gone in the middle I'm shocked 
shock they've gone in the middle are they trying to I don't there's nothing else supporting that particular attack so we could maneuver our knight couldn't we could attack the oh not yet his bishops on the pawn his bishops on the pawn do, 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 do. is it one of these push push and push onto the bishop where does the bishop go don't really want that flying anywhere, do I really? Knight coming here. And knight goes there. But if we push this, then it blocks that off. If we push here, then we can get to here because his bishop could go here and then he's pinning through onto our pawn. So I'm going to push here. And then it's got the option then of pushing onto the dark square bishop as well, or actually pushing onto the white square bishop. We've got to be mindful. This bishop is chomping at the bit to get this pawn. So if we fall asleep and we have plenty of time, so I don't need to get into narration mode, try and do proper calculation as best possible whoa did not see that coming I don't think that wins them the tempo they're wanting though mm hmm we could push on to the bishop no problems Choo -choo -choo. push on to the bishop where is he going not coming here like we said all that area is blocked off isn't it it's probably just going to sit back here does that give us a little bit of this then I think I'm going with that that looks pretty straightforward to me just inchy inchy up so it's like a pass pawn now which is okay this is a semi pass pawn so we have to be mindful of that so we're really wanting to get our pieces into the game but we're gonna have to fly this pawn up or up something like that okay so he's gone doesn't like going very far does he Mm hmm. So, so that this pawn definitely doesn't have any. We can go up. We could go here. We could come here. And uh, what else have we got? We don't have that. We could push there to go there. Or we could just block that down. Don't really think I'm interested in that one. So. If we did attack this pawn, and if his bishop takes our pawn, we take his pawn. That looks quite nice, because then we have bishop attacking the bishop here. Ooh. Let me see, let me see. Let me see, let me see. I still feel I want to get this knight off the back. And then at least it's protecting the pawn. Am I letting this pawn go though? If I bring the rook here, then if he does push, then we've got two on that pawn. I think it's um, probably better coming for this pawn. If he does take, then at least we take back. Yeah, because we don't want his semi-pass pawn to be strong. Lessons learned from previous games. Let's attack this pawn that has more potential. It's from the recent over the board game type things, you know. Got to block off them pawns, you know, even before they get started. I mean, now we've got a nice little passer here which is going to be annoying for the opponent but that would be annoying for us if it makes its way down and he supports it with his bishops 
and his rook. It's actually attacking the knight. I am not too sure if that is going to make it because now the knight can actually protect the pawn. Although we can't attack the pawn, but it's advancing our knight into the game because we would have lost a bit of tempo if we brought the knight up before we did this rook move. Now I think we've won a little bit of tempo in terms of defending this square but also getting it into some nice activity working around maybe okay so it's a nice thought process of going for the pawn still very mindful of this pawn now we need to circumvent either push this pawn to support this pawn doesn't have any support in it whatsoever either. Well, it looks like I'm putting a lot of thought into my process. I'm on 21 minutes and they're on 24. But that's what you have to do in these longer games and it's annoying when your calculation just doesn't quite work out. I would say I'm feeling comfortable, but he does have two bishops. I'm not I'm not scared of two bishops. The rook has come into the center of the board, attacking the bishop. And I'm not scared of that. Could go here, I don't know what that does. Does his rook have more power? And we could bring it back could activate the king one key thing from the over the board games recently as well activate your king because this looks like it's getting a little bit dicey now although there is a bit of a question mark with this bishop coming here we come there the bishop comes here he's got like a two on one now doesn't he hmm The bishop goes there, dummy, you just take it. <laughs> Dear me. Ah, you see, that is the thought process I have when I'm playing over the board. Ah, oh, dearie me. Wow, right, okay, so overthinking with the creative thinking. You can just take it if he does that. What about this here? We've got a pawn and we've got a rook protecting there, so that's not too much of a problem. So, I'm caught between two moves. Somehow I don't think this one works out too well for me. Because it's not really managing any proper squares for me. And it's giving the opponent the opportunity to come down here and attack these pawns. I suppose this can push up to defend, but his rook is getting a little bit agit well I suppose it's not too great but what is my bishop doing up here it's not doing anything let's bring the king and support active king The only concern I had was that, but obviously we can simply take the bishop if he comes here. So there's no 2-1-1. One, one. I can envisage him coming and attacking here to get rid of the knight so that his bishop can take this pawn. Knight can move. Do, 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 do. The bishop comes down, knight moves, and then if the bishop takes the pawn, which they probably will do because they'll feel they're winning, back 
the pawn but we've targeted this pawn with our rook so we can take this pawn with our rook we're also on this pawn also access to the king his king rook is down the bottom but he's not going to come here because the bishop will take Right, so bishop here, knight moves, bishop is going to take, obviously, then we will take here. Oh, where's his white square bishop? His white square bishop's here. Does he do something funky like bringing his bishop here, attacking our bishop? Where's my knight? Knight's up here. That would be an interesting situation, wouldn't it? Yeah, so he brings his bishop there. This is me. I'm going too far now. Let's just go for the... In fact, what's that for moves anyway? One. Two. In fact, it was three, wasn't it? That's three, isn't it? That looks like a nice move, you know. What is wrong with it? I saw the arrows, I can't really see what's happening. None of the above. Damn. Is trying to get this pawn down like we said gotta watch these pawn maneuvers god dear right okay so okay that we did all of it's like I've said before you can do all the calculation in the world and the opponent does not have to do anything that you've suggested and you feel like you've wasted all your time doing that calculation it's nice when they fall into the calculation that you've done because then it's easier but then when they do another move of some sort you have to do calculation again okay so obviously you're thinking going here but then he's going to drop again and he's got support with his bishop so i think we have to think small scale here just dropping the pawn up could attack it push the pawn up or we could attack it it does drop what's the knight doing up there attacking it looks but then he's just going to have to support with his pawn here Gonna have to support this pawn here, or he could just take the pawn anyway. If he takes the pawn anyway, I suppose our bishop can take the pawn and be on his bishop. I think there's probably more pluses there, isn't there? All right, knight comes here. If he takes the pawn. Bishop or the knight, bishop takes because it's attacking another piece. If the bishop takes, then the knight takes. Then the knight takes. It's on the rook. So the rook has to do something a bit proactive, like moving back. That might be the one. If he pushes down, don't rush it. I was just about to steam in there. If he pushes down. We said we have the bishop attacking the bishop because the knight's supporting that square. Yep. Let's go with 
that. Let's see how it plays out. We have two two versions to the story. I wonder if he's gonna throw in a third. So okay, so he's pushed the palm. And we did say attacking here. My concern is he doesn't have to take, does he? I'm trying to get rid of his bishops. If he moved in there, I suppose we can come back again, can't we? Uh, we attack, attack, they don't have to. We could attack his rook, squish his rook. If he takes, knight takes. Or even the pawn takes. Blocking Rook up Rook's not going to come down I think he's going to run Because he's a pawn down Attack the bishop In fact if we attack the bishop Bishop moves Can still attack the rook Oh no we can't Because the bishop's not here Blocking this um, square Let's just attack the rook The bishop one had a little bit too many variables in terms of it could go here, or it just could, well, could go there, but we we'll put a check thing on. And it can still come back around again, start attacking here. Yeah, okay. I think that was the better option ish. The hanging on to this pawn for dear life, we need to get rid of this pawn. I believe. So we could put a two on one once his rook disappears because he can't come here to defend. So our knight can come and put a two on one. But his bishop can actually attack our rook. So we probably have to do a intercepting move first before we even thought of that. But then he's probably going to have time to bring his rook to support the pawn coming back up here. Although his, his rook can't go there because the knight is defending that square. Ooh, interesting times. So he might be safer just taking the ante. I think he's going to come down with his bishop though. That's what I think he's going to do. I think he's going to hit my rook. What do we do? He wants this pawn passed like crazy. And if we take his rook, then his pawn is here. Our king can't get in front if his pawn is here. It comes there. I'm not taking. It comes there. We take definitely that's no good we're making the pawn get further up the board we don't have a dark squared bishop we have a knight but the square that it wants to go to is blocked so we'd have to do this type of thing to get to it but then his bishop can actually just come and defend and that's not a pretty picture for us no that's not a pretty picture at all Maybe we should have just gone with the bishop thing. <laughs> ah, it's funny how you see things once all the once the position is there. Hmm. Yeah, probably should have done the intercepting thing first. Like I said before, I was going to do the interception thing if we were going to do the bishop type thing and all that malarkey. And I, I didn't do it. That would have been a nice touch, stopping the bishop from coming here. I 
did say to myself I'm not going to record a 90 minute 10 second game because it'll take too long but oh he's come back he's come back we've been saved we've been saved so we can go with the manoeuvre that we said because his rook well mind you it still can go there but we can just attack the bishop so he has to make a decision what does he do I suppose in a way it's better for him because if the bishop takes and our knight takes and his rook comes here then he's got the two on one support but then we'll just take his other bishop off the board <laughs> okay let's see if that pans out so I'm hoping basically at this moment in time I'm just thinking positionally it's not too bad but it's just about work, trying to work the pieces together and block off the key things that they're attempting to get get done which is obviously this pass pawn here there doesn't seem to be any immediate pressure on my king apart from the rook coming down and putting a check here but I suppose that's easily defendable just move the king up or down whichever squeeze in there though will it just let's think if he could, does come down going up defending he takes voila he takes I am shocked to the core he's got to check on me but obviously we're on his bishop we're also on this pawn as well so the only thing that can defend that pawn is the bishop coming back here interesting times I didn't think they'd take actually, I thought they'd probably look to come down, back down again with the rook putting a check on, causing a bit of disturbance somewhere. Although maybe they wouldn't have been able to do that. Oh, yeah, because we're attacking his bishop, so he has to do something, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and in fact, if he had done that then our king could have could have actually come here and we would have got his bishop for free because he would have had to move his rook back up again so he would have lost tempo yeah so that made sense well he has come down now <laughs> he has come down now but that you know that thing that I was just talking about with losing the tempo thing I think that probably um, kicks in here because if we go here and he just takes a pawn off then we just take his bishop off the board his rook can't come to defend the bishop so the tempo in terms of him winning out in a sense is kind of lost so it's all gone a bit crazy now just from that um, bishop manoeuvre if you don't know what I mean um, he, his rook has to move as we can take it and if he can't come back to defend the bishop so the only thing is for him to peel off some pawns to equalize the the bishop amount so the rook is probably going to take one of these pawns then our knight takes so two pawns for a bishop in a sense that's kind of equal but we are plus one so But it's still doable, it's just going to have a rook against our pieces, but he's taken off pawns. It's definitely a positional play game, this one was. And I'm happy to utilise the lessons learnt from the um, over the board games that we had. Um, because that's what we're gearing towards anyway, again, you know, getting back into the over the board scene playing them tournaments, getting in there, getting into the mix of real people. So they probably just realised that the tempo is down for them, but 
I don't think they should, I don't think they should resign really, I think they sh they still got legs, one, yeah, like, like I said, so he has taken, yeah, it's still got legs, it's still got wear, in fact he could get three pawns, yeah, he's got this one as that and that one as well, yeah, so he's gobbling up pawns, so he's going to actually catch up to us on uh, pawn wise. Okay, okay we can't come and defend it, so we may as well just take this pawn off. Now, I don't want this to be one of those where I go to sleep in the end game and he starts championing all these pawns running down here. This is my creative brain now going absolutely crazy now. His rook's on the proper side of the board to help support these pawns down. So we do have a check, but again, it just comes in attacks the knight. So maybe we don't do that just yet. Maybe we bring the knight here. I don't know, and then bring it here. Something like that. Or do we start championing our own? I think we need to guard for these. I don't think there's a checkmate position at the minute. And we do have a passer as well, so I think bringing the knight here. Ooh, he's attacking us already. Like I said, bringing the knight here is going to allow us to put a check on here, potentially get this up, get the rook here. Trying to get them distracted from pushing these pawns down for definite. And also it's blocking off this square for the rook putting a check on the king. So a loose bit of this might happen. But he's got to deal with the check on this king first. Could look to hide in this corner here so that then his king's not getting checks on. But that'll be good for us because... Yes! That'll be good for us because he's blocking off these pawns from pushing down. Let's go for the check, obviously. Yeah, look at that. That's pleasing to the eye. Okay, right. So now we do have a passer. And like we said, the rook's going to have to do a few moves. And I think he will do a drop down and attack the king. So we have to be careful. Pass pawns want to be pushed. This is definitely... Oh, he's not doing that. That might give us time to push the pawn. Let's push the pawn and get promotion. He does have one more move. Yes, the rook coming down, as we as we said. Okay. So not going to rush this now. It's tempting to go here. His rook is going to come here to attack the pawn well the promotion but the problem that they have I'm just looking at this very carefully you have a look at the diagonal we do get a check on the king, so he's not going to be in time to put a check on our king. Let's just take a moment. And get the check on. This is how calm and collected I want to be playing over the board. This is what I'm trying to train myself to do and get those beautiful positions that we know we can get but we kind of end up fluffing and it can still be fluffed now that's the thing so we need to avoid this so we need to move the queen off of that line and we could just attack one of these pawns or oh, don't even have to do that we could just come across here or 
Oh, we could defend the knight. Yes. going to defend the knight and just taking it off of this line it's a precious piece because then if the pawn does take then we can take I think the rook is just gonna come and put a check on our king though we've got like what is it it's 90 minutes and 10 seconds so it's like I don't know what that means when it's all one is that like an hour that's not an hour is it is it yeah yeah, an hour so an hour and 12 minutes we've got to make the appropriate move I could go and get a, <clears throat> a drink and come back definitely positional play game this um, really interesting yes yeah, coming for the checks okay that's fine, so we'll just bring this down here and close in the area around his king now as well. What do we have? His king's on a dark square. Could come here. Oh! Has he just given up his rook? I think he's given up, hasn't he? Or is it a trick? Is it a trick? Am I falling into a trick if the knight takes the rook? I don't think I'm falling into a trick, am I? Let's just take the rook. Got to watch for stalemates. Please don't let me stalemate with... Oh, he's resigned. <gasps> or oh, she. Excellent. Let's have a look at the analysis. I know everybody's probably gone to sleep now, but hey, what can you do? Um, let's flick this on here. Let's take that off there. Okay, let's go to the beginning. Oh, this looks new. No, it's not. Quick shifty through. Definitely a quick shifty through because that was a very long game. And let's go here. Captured, captured. Okay, computer doesn't like that, but I like it, so it's all good. And so we push through. They push down. Yep, yep. Freeing up space for the king. But this was a nice position for us to actually take a pawn. Uh, so that gave us the slightest of advantages in the early part of the game. And then capturing the knight again for a felt like a half decent position. It's nothing major, it's showing there. And then they captured. Then we captured with the knight. Again, I think they probably could have just exchanged the queen there. So we captured, captured. So we did that to split the pawns up just highlighting the key points throughout the game basically so splitting them pawns up queen not exchanging potentially I'm not saying it's right or wrong um, just my general feeling so we're going for the exchange of the rook and then attacking the bishop feels right because now the knight is supporting it didn't feel so right just because we were going to double the pawns if there was nothing supporting and then we had this worry of this pawn coming down isolated as it is it's still a passed pawn and then creating a passed pawn for ourselves by attacking the bishop so just improving our position slightly a bit at a time potentially maybe should have taken but I'm not too sure it doesn't make much difference I don't think this rook move here I definitely had a big question mark on that rook move so I was fairly comfortable with that so bring the knight up and then the rook comes down. Rooks don't have any place in the centre of the board unless it's to your benefit. And if so, if a piece can be easily defended, then nine times out of ten, you're really going to leave your rook on the back until it's safer. So the king can defend the bishop. So now we can put a two on one on the pawn. And I'm not too sure about this rook move now. <laughs> you know, like I said, I mean that bishop could have come here. 
and that's going to give us a bit of world hurt. Well, gauge bar is not showing there's nothing major, but I'm definitely not taking. If we take, then this pawn is like coming in. But yeah, like you see the gauge bar is going, yeah, it's not too good for you. So it's knowing little tiny things like that. So I'd obviously just bring it straight back again if that happened. Yeah. So the key thing was we did talk about doing this intim intermission move first. You know, to block off the bishop and stuff like that. Um, it's not showing that that's a great shakes really. It's um, dropped a few points. Well, a point there. Okay, right, brought the knight up and brought the rook up. And taking the rook back was a little bit of an error, I think. So then at this point here, we're kind of improving our position a little bit on the board, just very slightly. And at this point here, this was that tempo thing that we were talking about, the rook putting a check on, but he's already got a piece under attack. So ordinarily, you don't go and attack on another piece unless, of course, um, it's going to be to your benefit. If you've got a piece under attack, you generally don't go and attack another piece. You could go do the Morphe thing and the Wilhelm Steinitz type sort of psychology of, okay, if you're attacking a piece of mine, I'm going to attack a piece of yours. But you have to look weigh up the pros and cons of you actually attacking another piece. Are you actually going to lose more material or better material in the exchange? So those are the things you have to sort of think about really in that sense. So all in all, I would say that this type of game is a game that is kind of given to me I've not really done anything major to create anything it's just basically the movement of the opponent's pieces which has allowed me to just shuffle my pieces a little bit to get a better position so there's no major tactics or anything just sweet positional play so yeah it was nice a nice gentle thing I think again understanding definitely the pawn maneuver here I did know that this was potentially coming but because he'd done this pawn move first he's lost tempo because he's allowed our pawn to get to this square if he had come here I think that might have been better it's not his go well, it's, there we go if he had come here that might have been a little bit better I mean the gauge bar is not singing the praises but at least he's potentially got the option of going up I mean computers saying C2 here just to protect the pawn going up although yeah the knight's protecting at the moment okay so it was still doable there now what would I have done because I wouldn't have done that if that had happened and he'd gone there my brain would have gone into flap mode Yep, because I know for well he's coming to attack. Now I'm not too sure if the rook would come here. I think they'll probably continue attacking. Then I'll probably hide in here. Then if they continue attacking again, then I'm going to hide here. Try to get my king into the behind my rook as best possible. I suppose he could keep his rook there, couldn't he? But I can keep my and keep pushing this pawn if he does. If he did that, I could still con continue pushing here oh I don't have to do that just yet I can move my knight attacking his rook his rook probably comes to attack and then block and then the tempo is kind of lost for them that would work out quite nicely interesting okay so yeah that's the whole all really uh, very interesting game and yeah, and that was a give up move at the end. So it's nice practice for the uh, competition coming up in September.